Summer's heat wave has been challenging for so many people and in a lot of ways. One challenge that's often overlooked is the stress that heat waves have on our nervous system. Our medical expert, Dr. David Winter from Baylor Scott and White Health joins us to discuss this. So first off, welcome Dr. Winter. Thank you so much for joining us. Second, tell us what the correlation is of these outdoor temperatures and the way they make us feel. Well, besides feeling hot and sweaty, they can also affect our mood, making us irritable, moody, anxious, even depressed. A study found that e emergency room visits during the hottest days of the summer have an increase in mental illness patients. Now, you don't have to be mentally ill to have a bad feeling when the temperatures soar. Even healthy people can feel unhealthy when those temperatures are up. So take caution with this. The other thing they, they tell us is that sleeping can make a difference also. So you want to sleep in cooler weather when you can, particularly in the summertime. And sleep experts say it's got to be 68 degrees or cooler. That seems cold to me, but that's what the sleep experts are saying, Megan. Yeah, you got to crank that AC down. And you mentioned, of course, sleeping in these cooler temperatures. So what else can people do to try and counter the effect that this has on our nervous systems? Yeah, hydration is very important. When it's hotter, we lose more fluid through our skin, our breath, even if we don't notice that. So you want to be careful with that. Alcohol and caffeine both put out more urine than the liquid that they contain. So mm. if you're drinking alcohol or drinking coffee, make sure you drink more water with that. I tell patients of mine that, boy, if you're not sure, watch how often you urinate and look at the color. If you're not urinating very much, particularly if the color is dark, you're not drinking enough. So be careful with that. Also, if you're taking certain medications, Megan, you need to be careful about that also. And you know, this dry heat can be difficult as well because you might not even realize that you're sweating because it evaporates so quickly. Uh, so can you talk a little bit about what we're experiencing here in Texas? Well, the, when the humidity is up, it is worse for you. The dry heat, though, you may not notice it, as you say, though, but you're losing a lot of moisture through your skin. So be careful with that. And I will point out diuretics, if you take those pills, they flush your kidneys out. That can make you more prone to dehydration. Certain antihistamine medications, certain antidepressant medications can also be a problem, so be careful with that. The first signs typically that you're getting into trouble, you feel lightheaded, you may get some muscle cramps. The next level though, you start to feel really fatigued and you're not making much urine and sometimes you get a little confused. At that point, you better get indoors, cooler weather and drink lots of water. All right, and you also talked about that new strain of COVID last week that's increasing in America. I mean, I'm starting to hear about this in my circle as well. One of my family members just got diagnosed. What are we seeing with COVID right now? Yeah, it's still going up, Megan. It's this new strain, EG.5. It's more contagious than the ones before. That's why it's taken over not just this country, but around the world. Fortunately, it's not a severe disease for most people. If you're otherwise healthy, you may have just mild symptoms. Also, if you need something, Paxlovid, the, or Paxlovid, some people call it, that antibody for the COVID, that works well for this. So there's treatment out there if you need it. Unfortunately, most of it get by pretty well, particularly if you're healthy. Okay, so what about these COVID vaccines? Because there's a lot of debate right now. If you are looking to get one, should you get one right now? Is there going to be an updated version coming out perhaps in the fall? What would you suggest? Well, if you're otherwise healthy and if, you had a, if you've had a COVID vaccine within the past year, within 12 months, you don't need to do anything else. Now, mm -hmm. if you're immunocompromised, if you have chronic heart disease, kidney disease, weak lungs, some people say you ought to get another vaccine within four to six months if you're worried about your health. There is a new vaccine coming out. We're told it'll be later this month or maybe the 1st of October. So we'll see about that. We're not sure when it's going to come out. It's said to be a better vaccine, though. So if you had one recently, you can wait, but these vaccines do work. They don't necessarily prevent illness, but they prevent serious illness mm. and hospitalizations. All right, Dr. Winter, hey, appreciate all of the information you gave us today. Thank you so much.